It's the Philco Safari, the world's first battery-powered television set. That's right, transistor television that plays anywhere without plugging in. Just like a portable radio, it works outdoors from a powerful rechargeable battery. And what a picture. It's like looking at a theater screen. Wherever there's a television signal, the Philco Safari brings it in sharp and clear. In 1959, Philco Corporation announced the Safari, the world's first battery-powered, portable, transistorized television. It weighed only 15 pounds and ran on rechargeable batteries or regular AC power. It used 21 transistors, 12 diodes, two rectifier tubes, and one two-inch wide cathode ray tube. The picture image was viewed using a specialized mirror projection technique. The picture was generated by its two-inch picture tube, which faced upward inside the set. The image was reflected to a viewing window, which provided a larger viewable image. This example of the screen shows how the viewed image seems to float in the air, depending on the position of the viewer. The picture clarity and sound were relatively good for the time period. An adjustable sun visor also made it possible to watch the screen outdoors, even in sunlight. Safari Specifications The unit was 8.5 inches wide by 16.5 inches high by 5.5 inches deep. It came in two models, black leather or natural tan leather. It sold for $250, which is about $2,300 today. Its rugged construction reflected Philco's well-known attention to detail and quality. Philco promoted the Safari through numerous advertising channels. Technical articles also appeared in popular magazines such as Radio Electronics, Popular Science, Electronics Illustrated, and others. A look inside the Safari. The internal chassis with the cover and mirror projection unit removed shows the 2-inch CRT. Internal electronics are very tightly packed with a metal frame protecting the components and CRT. The well-designed circuit boards and channel selector help so many of these units still function even 60 years later. Competitors. The all transistor Sony TV8 was made available in the U.S. less than a year after the Safari was released. This was followed by the Sony Micro TV in 1962, which proved highly successful. Both the TV8 and Micro TV were direct view televisions and did not use a magnifying or projection technique. Initially, prices of portable TVs remained high at first but quickly decreased through the 1960s as more competitors joined the marketplace and technologies and picture quality improved. 